Hey everybody, Pierre Paul here and in, today in this short uh, vlog post I want to talk about ESAs, Environmental Site Assessments Phase 1. First of all, um, getting an ESA is part of your due diligence when you buy an apartment building, whether you're purchasing an apartment building or you're refinancing because remember when you're refinancing uh, the clock starts taking a brand new, like as if it's a brand new deal. So all their four key risk factors have to be reassessed, reanalyzed and remitigated. So that's uh, when you need an ESA. What is an ESA? So I got one here, uh, one that I got done a couple of years ago, the most recent that I've got. And um, basically it looks at potential for contamination on the site where the property is located. So it looks at current use for the apartment building as well as the history of that site where the apartment building is located because as you probably know many of these apartment buildings were infills built on infill, infill sites uh, there were probably uh, single homes on it very often that's what happens and then they tore them down and built a uh, an apartment uh, building so just want to scroll through and give you some of the tips in that regard one of the first things that you got to make sure talk to your lender Perhaps a mortgage broker would know as well. If not, uh, the broker will ask the lender uh, to make sure that what CSA uh, the ESA has to be. All right, that's a lot of acronyms here. But what CSA is the Canadian Standard uh, Association number specific standard for an ESA that your lender requires. In this particular case, the standard uh, is called Z or Z768-01. Uh, standard R2016. All right, I think I was just talking to my engineer who did this one earlier, and this is pretty much standard, the standard used in Canada. But before you go out and pay uh, an engineer to do an ESA for you, phase one, make sure that he's going to be using or doing it according to the proper standard as required by your lender. But basically, I'm just going to read to you the executive summary here what it says. So, the purpose of phase one ESA is to identify actual and potential site contamination. Phase one ESAs may assist in reducing uncertainty about potential environmental liabilities and may be the basis for further investigation of the property. Uh, phase one ESA may be used to make informed decisions about property transaction, identify certain baseline environmental conditions, assist in meeting regulatory uh, and as an initial step in site remediation. All right. This particular case, and when I was an underwriter at CME, well, before I go, I go there, let me remind you of something. The reason why I wanted to do a vlog post on this is because when I was an underwriter, something that I've learned very quickly, uh, there's a huge stigma attached uh, in the lending industry with CMHC uh, with property that have properties with, which have a, 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 an environmental contamination. I remember my days at CMHC, CMHC when it, uh, it paid claims for for properties that had uh, environmental contamination, but they would refuse to take title because you take on the liability. So this is why it's such an important document, such an important step in your uh, due diligence process. But when I was an underwriter, I wouldn't read the full report. Literally, I would stick to the executive summary. So as I said, uh, I just read you the purpose of it, and then I would jump straight to the conclusion. And in this case, the conclusion says that based on a review of the readily available information, a site visit and interviews, no evidence of contamination was found uh, in the, the name of the apartment and then they would give the legal uh, uh, description for the property. And accordingly, in the recommendations section of the ESA, it says, based on the information presented in this ESA report and the conclusion that there is no evidence of contamination, no further investigation is warranted. So that's what you want to see when you get your ESA back, phase one. Now, let me dig a little bit deeper what... Um, what does a, an engineer look at when they conduct an ESA? So basically there's four principal components of an ESA. First of all, records review, site visit, interviews, and evaluation of information and reporting, all right? And the engineer will conduct uh, municipal, uh, provincial and municipal record search, searches, if you will, and review them for any activity that could have caused a, a contamination. They'll look at documents such as uh, land title documents. So that's uh, going back into the history of the property. What was previously on site? 
Some of the examples of the concerns that we have or that lenders and CMHC have will be with uh, sites that had previously either a dry cleaner or a gas station with an underground uh, storage tank. Uh, so maybe it would have leaked or the dry cleaner would have dumped some chemicals that they use for dry cleaning onto the side before the apartment building was built. Uh, they will look at uh, inventories of landfills. So perhaps that's another potential uh, source of contamination if there was a landfill on site before. They'll look at zoning plans and maps. Again, going back in history, uh, municipal assessment rules, uh, um, aerial photographs, soil reports, topo topographic maps to see where water flows and so on, and geological reports. So it's quite an in-depth um, um, analysis and um, it's required as I said for whether you acquire an apartment building or you're refinancing one. Now let me give you another tip as well. So you will need an ESA regardless uh, whether it's a purchase or you refinance your apartment building but sometimes and this is a multi-family hack I try to give you those as I can as much as I can uh, but when you hire the same engineer sometimes that does your ESA can also do your property condition report so that's the first hack that I wanted to tell you so it may save you a lot of money because he can do both things and is going to the site to your apartment building and can do both the property condition uh, or property assessment condition report as well as your ESA so that's one tip that you can save money sometimes as in this case this particular ESA that I had done um, the uh, vendor had an older ESA so what I asked the vendor is to uh, release it to me so I can rely on it so I got a letter of transmittal from the previous vendor and I also hired the same engineering company to update the ESA now what you need to know uh, ESAs need to be current to be valid for lending purposes uh, I know CMT recently changed its uh, requirements it used to be that if the ESA is within two years uh, of when you're seeking to get financing you can get a letter of transmittal and it's now addressed to you and so you can legally rely on it now it's only if the ESA is a year or newer uh, you can you know get a letter of transmittal again the letter of transmittal is the previous owner of the ESA so, uh, gives you permission to rely on it you pay for a fee for that but it may save you some money or you can also hire the same engineer to uh, update the ESA in this in this case uh, under your name so that you can legally rely on it so that's uh, that's it for this uh, vlog post guys but I wanted you to be aware of that it is a critical step uh, so that's phase one non-intrusive quickly I want to mention about phase two phase two is a bit more intrusive and I've experienced that in my days at CMHC as a multifamily underwriter uh, they need to bore a hole in the ground to collect soil samples as well as now based on some municipalities water sample to ensure that there's no contamination so a phase two is obviously more expensive than a phase one a phase one will cost you uh, in my neck of the woods about twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars if you go to phase two it's much more expensive and phase three i believe uh entails a remediation so super expensive uh, the general advice i give to my students and it's not a hard rule uh, if you have an ESA issue, uh, a site contamination, walk away from the deal. But I do have successful students who had bought a, uh, who have bought a property that was on a previously on a contaminated site and were able to resolve the problem. But I also know of other files and friends of mine or other multifamily owners that uh, tried to resolve, had the property under contract for many years, in the hope of uh, you know solving the site contamination and were unsuccessful so it's to be approached with a lot of caution generally speaking especially if you're a novice investor you probably want to walk away uh, from uh, uh, an apartment building that has an environmental site assessment a um, couple more things please leave me some comments like I said it's 2020 a little bit late I'm still working out technology and stuff like that but uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more on online um, so Facebook so if you haven't joined my Facebook live please uh, join it I'll uh, I'll attach a link below uh, it's multifamily investing Canada on Facebook uh, I'm gonna do lots more training and Facebook live as I said so but please leave me some comments tell me what you'd like to hear about uh, I'd love to to, to uh, share my knowledge with you in areas that you you need to know about and uh, the workshop dates are out there I'm gonna put a link below uh, first one is in Langley British Columbia 
You know the format, we go to an apartment building, you're accompanied by a building, uh, professional building inspector, and then we work on case studies. So pretty cool stuff. First one is in Langley on uh, May 1st to the 3rd, Edmonton, May 22nd uh, to the 24th, and then last one in Hamilton, uh, June 5th to the 7th. So I'm selling them, I'm not stressed about marketing, but they're selling. They're small groups, so you, you don't want to wait till the 11th hour because uh, they usually sell out and they're small groups, 20, 30 people usually at the most. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next vlog post. Again, uh, thank you for watching the Canadian Multifamily Investing Insider vlog. Cheers. Thank you.